yourself Iborg. Iborg. What does that mean? Iborg is a, is a catchy way to refer to the fact that I'm a cyborg of sorts, and the reason why I'm a cyborg is because I have a uh, robot eye. How did this come to be? How did you come to get this robot eye? Well, you know, um, when I was nine years old, it's on a, my grandfather's farm in, in Northern Ireland, and I thought it'd be a really good idea to take my grandfather's 12-gauge shotgun and shoot a pile of cow shit and blow it up with a shotgun. And uh, I did that. I succeeded in that goal. But in doing so, I uh, wasn't holding the gun properly. I had my eye against the gun like the cowboys in the movies. It backfired a bit and uh, damaged the eye very badly. But they saved it. Uh, however, over the years, it got worse and worse until in 2007, I had to have it removed. But by that time, I was a documentary filmmaker. And um, I thought, you know, filmmaker, hole in my head, peanut butter, chocolate, you know, just whoosh. So I, I started, and the way these things start is you Google bionic eye, see where it takes you, you make a few strange cold calls, and uh, a few years later I have, I have a, a camera eye. And is it connected to you, or do you take it out? Um, it's, it's pretty simple technology, it's just the, the trick was to miniaturize everything and fit it into a strange space, but it's, it's a wireless video camera with a battery, uh, a camera, and a transmitter, and a bit of circuitry to, to make everything talk to each other. But it sends a wireless video signal, um, RF analog, to a receiver, and then the receiver is a video source that you can plug into vi any video recording device, or it's a video source once it gets to the receiver. Everyone wants to know, is it connected to your brain? Like, you know, like the Bionic Man or the Borg or, you know, insert your pop fiction uh, character here. But no, it's not connected to my brain at all. It's just um, literally like a hole. And it's, it's a prosthetic eye you can pop in and out. How do people react when they find out that you've got a, a camera in your eye? Generally two reactions. One is, wow, that's really cool. And the other one is like, geez, but that's kind of creepy. Um, because the... Uh, the eye is probably the most human part of the body. It's like the window to the, to the soul. Um, however, <clears throat> there's the sense that, oh, this might be the window to bloody uh, YouTube or Ustream. And it feels like you're kind of breaking the human contract a little bit when that pupil to pupil human thing, one of the last most human kinds of interaction we have is actually jammed into the uh, Skynet now. So you must get a lot of like, what well, are you filming right now? Yeah, no, it, women I've met are like, uh, so, you know, they want to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you filming and when are you filming? Which is, you know, totally reasonable. Mm -hmm. Are you filming right now? Uh, if it's in, are you filming? Yeah, well, no, I, could, it's, I can turn it on. Right now it's just laying dormant, uh, and I have an on-off switch uh, via a magnet that activates a reed switch that'll turn the eye on and off. Um, but um, once I do that, then there's a video signal going to a, a receiver that I can turn on. But no, I'm not filming right now. Can we film a bit while yeah, we do Yeah, sure. This? So this is my bionic eye. You can see the camera in there. Oh, yeah. Just like the little teeny camera. Bam. Okay. Eyeboard. Pod man, pod machine. As we think of the future and what's happening in the next five years and ten years and twenty years, we hear a lot about man and machine merging into one. And so much of that conversation is theoretical, but it seems like you would have some inside thoughts and experiences. So what do you think about the, both the possibilities and, and the benefits, but also maybe the dangers from your ex own experience? I think it's just a, a, a normal evolution. It just happens to be going more quickly. We're taller, we're stronger. Uh, we've got contact lenses, people are getting laser surgery, they're getting boob jobs, you know. This is all normal to us because we're used to it and it's, it's happened sort of gradually. But as, as time goes on in the near future, I think just it's the same business as usual, it's just moving a little quicker now. For a very long time what we've seen in terms of evolution, human evolution, has been biological evolution. Now what we're seeing as our machines become smaller and more powerful, nanotechnology is actually technological evolution where we're changing more based on machines than even DNA. That's what's changing the most quickly with humans. So how do you think it's going to change us as a species? 
I think psychologically and emotionally, it, it's because it's moving more quickly, that creates more tension. Like, I very well may have a kid, I don't have any yet, uh, but it, at some point, he'll be like, yeah, Dad, I'm getting my eye removed to get the XJ5000 eye. And I'm going to have this dilemma, I'm going to go, well, that's not right. He's like, well, you did it, Dad. And I'm like, but that was different, you know. Um, because it, when people start making the choice to, to radically alter themselves, but I mean, if you ask your grandma, hey, grandma, would you like to go get a laser in your eye that will just change your vision? She would think you were nuts. For us, it's okay. Oh, laser surgery. Everybody does laser surgery. That's fine. 